Good morning, and thank you for joining us at UB. It is a pleasure to have Governor Como here with us today. We also have some special guests with us, Council Member David Rivera, Council President Richard Fontana, Legislator Lynn Marileni, Former Congressman Kathy Hochul, President Jack Quinn of Erie Community College, Legislator Timothy Hokes. Hokes. Over the last two years, Governor Como has taken bold steps to ensure that our SUNY schools play a key role in revitalizing our upstate economy. That is why he created the NY SUNY 2020 grants and made sure that the academics from all fields were asked to participate in the Regional Economic Development Councils. He knows that our SUNY system is one of the jewels of this state and that by working with New York businesses, we can help train our young people for the jobs of tomorrow. Our grant application was approved in December of 2011, and since then we have had hard, hard at work implementing our plan to build a world-class university, become a leader in the emerging biomedical economy, and create thousands of jobs in Western New York. And this year, with the third round of NY SUNY 2020 funding, other SUNY schools will have the opportunity to grow and become leaders in their fields. It has truly been an honor to work side by side with the governor, with Governor Como and his team. I thank him for his dedication to ensuring that our higher education institutions continue to be the best in the nation. It is now my pleasure to introduce my co-chair on the Western New York Regional Economic Development Council, Howard Zemsky. Howard. Thank you, Satish, and good morning. I'd like to start by welcoming Governor Cuomo, the governor of the new New York, to the new Buffalo and Western New York. <clears throat> During the past two years, I've had the honor of working with the governor and his team as co-chair of the West New York Regional Economic Development Council. Governor Cuomo's approach to economic development in West New York and across the state is a sea change for the better. For the first time in way too long, we are empowered to develop our own job creation strategies that leverage our unique assets in Western New York, of which, as you all know, we have an abundance. The profound idea of moving the center of economic development decision-making from Albany into each region is transforming economic activity and job creation across the state. For the first time in a long time, businesses from Buffalo to Brooklyn are excited to have a business-friendly, private sector-friendly, job-creating-friendly governor who values the private sector, who listens, who delivers, and who empowers each region's community. So yes, while these positive impacts are statewide, they are particularly evident here in Buffalo, where we now spend a lot less time dwelling on the past and a lot more time imagining our future. From the Buffalo Billion to ensuring the bills stay in Buffalo, Governor Cuomo has so obviously made Buffalo and Western New York an extraordinary priority of his administration. You see the progress every day as academia and business and labor and all the state agencies work together to make positive change. In industries including ag and food processing, advanced manufacturing, binational logistics, education, life sciences, professional services and tourism, you see progress every day and you see tremendous commitment and progress going on in our urban cores in the city of Buffalo, 
tremendous revitalization, and in Niagara Falls. Just look at the front page of today's Buffalo News. It's typical of the transformation that's going on in this region. The budget he is going to sign today continues his extraordinary commitment to business and job creation in Western New York. It's now my pleasure to introduce Assemblywoman Crystal People Stokes. Good morning. Uh, welcome to the 141st Assembly District and the University of Buffalo. It is my pleasure to be here with you this morning. I want to take a moment on behalf of Speaker Silver to acknowledge my colleague, De Dennis Gazbazek, who has joined us here this morning, and to welcome the governor again to Buffalo and Western New York. I always say this, but every time he comes, he brings good news, and we have good news again today. Last week, the governor and the state legislature passed the third consecutive on-time budget. Uh, that's not a feat that has been accomplished for 30 years, so it's really a, a, a great feeling. Uh, it was kind of grueling, but it was worth every minute of it. Since taking office, Governor Cuomo has been a true leader on progressive issues. This year, he advanced and the Assembly joined him in advancing a bold and once again progressive agenda for New York State. The budget that the governor is going to sign today, that we all voted for last week, includes an increase in New York's minimum wage because this state is an expensive place to live and New Yorkers are struggling in these tough economies. Raising the state's minimum wage will not only promote opportunity and mobility, it's a necessary investment in our neighborhoods, our economy, and our future. Working with Governor Cuomo, we were able to not only increase the minimum wage, but to also make investments in our schools and in our communities. This year, we will once again show the rest of the nation and the world that Albany is working for the people of the state of New York and that we are and will continue to be the progressive capital of the nation and a beacon of equality and fairness. It is now my pleasure to introduce my colleague in the state Senate, Senator George Maziars. Thank you very much, uh, Crystal. I appreciate that introduction. Governor, unfortunately, uh, bad weather kept you in Albany yesterday. You missed one hectic dingus day in Buffalo, Governor. Uh, county executive polling cars went to 11 dingus day parties and still managed to show up here today on time. Uh, normally, at this time, I would acknowledge the members of the Senate that are here today. Uh, Senator Mark Rosani wanted desperately to be here, Governor and it was either be here or uh, be in a dentist chair getting a root canal. I thought the two of you were friends. He chose a dentist. Uh, over uh, the past two years, the governor has focused on making our state government work for the people and businesses of New York State. The budget that we passed last week cuts taxes for middle-class families who have been overburdened for too long, and Governor Cuomo recognizes that. It also provides tax cuts for small businesses here in Western New York and across New York State so that they will be able to grow and create new jobs. The governor recognizes that cutting taxes for small businesses sends a positive sign to the private sector. Like Howard said, this budget is further proof that New York is no longer the tax capital of the nation, but the business capital of the nation. I've been in Albany for a few years. Budgets are never easy. There are, all, there are never enough resources to go around. With three consecutive on-time budgets that close multi-million dollar gaps with no new taxes, Governor Cuomo and the legislature have transformed Albany into a national model of effective and efficient government. Governor Cuomo has demonstrated, as Howard pointed out, that he's a friend to Western New York. I remember the first time I had uh, a dinner with the governor in the governor's uh, home in Albany he had dinner with the Senate leadership, and he said, you know, Western New York, what can we do there? And I said, Governor, uh, with the, 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 you know, the reality of, of, of Mr. Wilson's age, uh, the Buffalo Bills are important to Western New York. It's, it's a psychological need that we have in Western New York. We love that team. And he went, immediately went to work and said, I'm going to ensure that the Buffalo Bills stay in Western New York for a long time into the future. He's demonstrated that he's a friend to Western New York, 
by coming here today to sign his first signing of the budget here in Buffalo and in Western New York. It's a great privilege and honor for me, on behalf of all of my colleagues in the New York State Senate, to introduce the governor of the state of New York, Andrew Cuomo. Governor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be back in Buffalo, Western New York. I did try to get here yesterday. It was a bona fide effort. The plane would not leave in the morning due to weather. Uh, but coming in the second day after the Dingus Day parades is not necessarily a bad idea. The <laughs> way I figure it is uh, Mark Poland cars sampled all the sausage already. He did all the runner-ups. And now I can just focus on the best sausage on the day after. So I want to thank the county executive very much for his uh, his work in uh, doing the initial vetting of the sausage, and I'm here to be here. Uh, it's my pleasure to be here the second day. County Executive Mark Poland Carr, it's a pleasure to be with you. Uh, thank you for being here. Uh, Dr. Satish Tripathi, what a great leader, what a great leader of UB, but more of uh, Western New York in general. He is a visionary, uh, and he's brought energy, and he's brought optimism, and it's exactly what we needed. Uh, he's been very kind to me. I've been at UB so many times, I'm afraid they're going to start to charge me tuition. But it's a pleasure to be back, doctor, and we thank you all for your leadership. Let's give a round of applause to Dr. Tripathi. <laughs> to Howard Zemsky, every time I hear about Howard Zemsky, there's another flattering profile on Howard Zemsky. You ever notice that? Star of Buffalo, then the star of Western New York, they're working on a new piece, star of the universe, Howard Zemsky. <laughs> Luckily, he's with us. Give him a big round of applause, Howard Zemsky. <laughs> and between uh, Dr. Tripathi and Howard Zemsky, the Regional Economic Development Council is really doing great work, and there's a lot of energy, and we thank them uh, for their work. It's not easy. Uh, and we asked them to do it on a pro bono volunteer basis. I said, oh, don't worry, it won't be much. Uh, it, it's turned out to be quite a lot, so we thank them very much. And my colleagues uh, from Albany, who've done a really great job in doing the people's business, we said when we started that we were going to try to do it a different way, and we were going to try to take the politics out of the process, because we're Democrats, we're Republicans, but we're New Yorkers first. And we've seen too many governments get gridlocked when people play politics. So let's leave that outside the room, and let's do the people's business. And uh, we've done exactly that. And that's one of the reasons we're getting so much done in Albany. And the credit goes to them, Senator George Maziars, who's a great representative uh, in the Senate, who's always fighting for Western New York. Uh, you couldn't have a more tenacious, more engaged advocate uh, and Assemblywoman Crystal Peoples-Stokes, uh, who is the same in the Assembly side. She's all about making government work for the people in her district, uh, and she does it 24 hours a day. It's my pleasure to call both of them colleagues and friends and applaud them on passing this budget. <laughs> Senator George Maziars and Congresswoman Stokes. You know, we talk about the state budget in Albany, and it sounds like, first of all, Albany sounds like a place far away, and a budget, state budget, sounds like a document, a process that has nothing to do with you or your life. Actually, the reverse is the truth. It's not about the state government, and it's not about Albany. It's about Buffalo, it's about Western New York, it's about your community, it is about your family and your life. This is an extraordinarily impactful agreement and document for every person in this room and every person in this state. And the budget is about three things. It's about helping your family, it's about creating jobs, and it's about increasing education. It starts with the family because this budget recognizes the pressure that the families in this state are under, the economic pressures. This has been a down economy. It's been a down economy for a long time. They talk about economic cycles. We have been down for a long, long time. Parts of this state, especially in upstate New York, it compounded an already egregious economic problem. And the last thing we were willing to say to families in this state was, we need more taxes. 
The last thing we were going to do is put government's hand in the pocket of the taxpayer who's already stretched, already working hard to pay bills, and say government needs more money. We set out to say the exact opposite. Government needs less money. They're balancing their checkbook at home. We're going to balance our checkbook on the government side. And we're going to find out how to spend less money to give hardworking middle class families a break. And that is exactly what we did. Middle class families in this state, from $30,000 to $300,000, middle class, wide tranche, will pay the lowest tax rate in 60 years, believe it or not. Lowest tax rate in 60 years. Not since Jackie Robinson played for the Brooklyn Dodgers have taxes been this low for the middle class, and that's saying something. On top of that, we have an additional $350 uh, dollar tax credit to families with children to try to help them make ends meet. So the first point was reduce the pressure on the families. The second was make sure there are jobs and careers to keep our young people here and jobs to run the economy. Because the single best thing we can do from Washington is get that economy up and running. The single best thing Albany can do is get that economy up and running. If there are jobs, if there's a tax base, people can take care of themselves, family can take care of themselves, the county executive is happy, he has a tax base, the mayor's happy, he has a tax base, so get that economy running. And we're doing everything we can to make that happen. First, as you heard from Senator Maziarz, reduce taxes. Why? Because business taxes are an obstacle to business. And we've been talking for years about how businesses are more mobile and they'll move, and they'll move from New York if New York is the tax capital. So hear that and act on it and say to business, we want you to stay here, we want you to grow with us, we want you to invest with us, and we're reducing taxes, so stay with us. And that's what we do in this budget. We bring down small business tax. We bring down manufacturing taxes on businesses. 29,000 businesses in western New York will get a tax break by this budget as a signal. Stay here. Stay with us. We're reducing the barriers. Second step on creating jobs is exactly what Howard Zemsky was talking about. How do we produce jobs in Buffalo and Western New York? Well, I'll tell you what you don't do. You don't do it from Albany. You do it from Buffalo and Western New York because you know much better than anyone else what's going to work here, what businesses will work, and what you need to turn around this economy. So the regional economic development councils are just that. It's the organization of Western New York leading officials in Western New York, citizens of Western New York, deciding what is the new economy for Western New York, which is a big question, especially in Buffalo. We spend a lot of time talking about the old economy and what we used to do and steel mills in the good old days. That's nice to remember the past and remember history. But better is to look forward and look to the future and design a future and make the future a reality. What is the new economy for Buffalo? What are the new jobs? What's the new industry and where are we headed? That's the Regional Economic Development Council. This budget continues that and gives them more tools and more assets to deploy. We have a program called Hotspots, Innovation Hotspots, where we're going to say to the REDCs across the state, come up with business incubators working with academic institutions to find those great new ideas that are coming out of the schools and will incubate those new businesses in a private incubator where we'll give them all the support services they need and we'll make those incubators tax-free zones. So while those businesses are developing, there's absolutely no taxes on them whatsoever. But there's one condition. You grow that business, we'll invest in that business, but that business stays in the state of New York and those jobs come to New Yorkers. That's what this budget is all about, creating jobs. And once we create the jobs, as the Assemblywoman said, they have to pay a fair and livable wage. The minimum wage in the state of New York was $7.25 an hour. 
725, if you work for full time, that's $14,000 a year. You cannot support a family in this state on $14,000 a year. So it raises the minimum wage to $9 an hour. That was the right thing to do, the fair thing to do, and it was long overdue. We have a youth tax credit to help youth find a job because they're struggling in this market. We have a veterans tax credit to help veterans find jobs because they're struggling in this market. And the third piece of the budget is education because all the rhetoric is right. What's the single best thing we can do as a society, as a government, is get our children the best education possible. This budget provides education in the state more money than ever before. More money than ever before. More state aid than ever before. But it also does something else. Because I don't believe more money is always the answer. This state spends more for education per student than any state in the country. Than any state in the country, and we're down at the bottom in terms of performance. So it's not just about the money. It's about what we're getting for the money. And that's what we haven't been focusing on. Now, the whole nation moved this way a few years ago. And they wanted what's called teacher evaluation systems, performance measurements, so we can measure what's happening in the classroom. President Obama started an initiative in his first term. Evaluate the teachers, see what teachers are doing well, what teachers are doing poorly. The teachers who are doing poorly, you work with to improve. The teachers who are doing well, you emulate. What classrooms are working, and are the students actually achieving? That's the teacher evaluation system. We talked about it. In 2010, 2011, 2012, we couldn't get it done. Local school districts resisted. The unions resisted, resisted. For the first time this year, we're going to increase the funding, but every school district will do a teacher evaluation system. We'll have real performance measurements. We'll know what works, and we'll have measurements to go forward. You heard the Assemblywoman say this is the third budget passed on time. Which you might say, well, that's no big deal to pass a budget on time. And you're right, in the real world, it is no big deal. In Albany, it's a very big deal. <laughs> For many, many years in Albany, the budgets were late. And it became sort of the symbol of the dysfunction of Albany. And there was an annual ritual. Uh, that went on for 20 years. April 1 is the deadline by which the state is supposed to have a budget. So you start to get close to April 1, and then you'd see on the news, well, the state deadline is one week away. Will the state actually get a budget done on time this year? And people that were cautiously optimistic were trying. Well, we're three days from April 1. Well, we're trying. So say, well, we're two days. Well, we're still trying. The night before April 1, are they going to have a budget on time? Well, we'll see, maybe under the wire. April 1, no budget on time. And then it was one day late, one week late, one month late, two months late, people pointing fingers. And it really was a sign of not only the dysfunction, but the arrogance of government. Because in everybody else's life, you have to meet a deadline. You're supposed to pay taxes by April 15th. You can't just forget to pay taxes, you know. Everyone else has to live within rules. Only government didn't have to live within rules. And that went on year after year after year after year. And it's one of the, one of the real symbols, I think, that caused people to distrust the state government in Albany and feel distant and isolated from it. So when we say we got three budgets done on time, it's not just about a budget. It's the reverse metaphor is that the government is working, and the Assembly is working with the Senate, and they put politics aside, and we're actually making the government work for the people of the state once again. Three times in a row is a big deal. The Assemblywoman said it was about 30 years. 1984 was the last time this state had three budgets done on time. Quick trivia question. 
Who was the governor in 1984? <laughs> Who? Okay, big nose, baggy eyes. Mario Cuomo was the governor in 1984, the last time three budgets were passed in a row. However, the three budgets, of those three budgets, Mario Cuomo had done two of those budgets. Hugh Carey, the preceding governor, had done one. So really, my father only did two budgets on time. I did three budgets on time. Not that I want to compete with the old man, mind you. Not that I'm going to mention this to him. Uh, but that's what it's about. It's not just about getting the budget done. It's making the government work again and making it work for the people. And for a lot of years, I believe the dysfunction of the state government actually held back the state because this state uh, has every possible asset that is imaginable. We have the greatest workforce. We have the greatest health care institutions. We have the greatest schools. We have the greatest people. And now we have a government that's actually willing to work with the people of this state. And I think you're going to see this state continue to take off and increase because there is a New York comeback and there is a different energy. And you feel it in Buffalo and you feel it in Western New York. People are looking to the future and people are optimistic and they are talking about the new Buffalo and the new Western New York. And it's not about what was, it's about what's going to be. What is the future going to have for us? And how do we keep our young people here? And that's what we're here to partner with you on. Because at the end of the day, this all gets very simple. The role of government, the role of society, the role of the Regional Economic Development Council, it's very simple. What's it all about? As a citizen as, and as a parent, it's about leaving this place better for our children than we inherited it. Leaving them a safer community, a better community, a stronger community than we had. Making sure this place is better when we leave it than when we found it. And government is your partner in making that reality. And that, my friends, is a mission we will not fail at. I promise you. Thank you for being here. Let's sign the budget. <laughs> Nothing's easy in government. Nothing's easy. Now we have a special memento. This is a hockey puck. Memento of signing the budget. Why? Three budgets in a row. Hat trick. The Sabres will tell you that. Can we ask the three folks to remain right here?